Hello, welcome to another Rio how-to. And today's how-to is about using a spay casting rod like this spay rod for making a spay cast called a snap tee. Now the snap tee is also known as a, uh, a circle spay or a C spay or a snap Z. And there's lots of names for it. And, and names, you know, irrelevant at this stage. The important thing is the physics of the cast and when you would do it and why would you do it. So let's have a look. Right now we've got a wind that's going straight up the river. If I'm casting, and be casting across the river here, I'll be casting with my right hand. This is an up river wind. And what that means is that you always want to make a cast with your upstream hand. So if the wind is blowing that way and I'm casting this way, the line blows away from me. That's safe. Right? You always want to be safe. What you don't ever want to do is make this cast when the wind's blowing down river. Because if the wind's blowing that way and I'm casting this way, the line's going to blow into me and hit me and, and it's a terrible thing. You're going to get hurt. So the first thing to know about this cast is make this cast when the wind blows upriver or if there's no wind, right? But just don't do it with the down river wind. The second time to use this cast is if you're using a Skagit style line, Skagit head. On the end of a Skagit, you'll usually have a sink tip and you usually have a heavy fly. And as you'll see in this cast, the significance of that is that this cast has a, what's called a waterborne anchor. And what that means is the line is on the water during the de-loop stroke and you need the water to grip the heavy fly and sink tip and stop it kicking out. So when you're having sinking lines and heavy flies like that, this is the same cast that you must do. You must have a waterborne cast and if you've got the upstream wind, then that's perfect. So those are your two reasons for making a snap tee. Upstream wind or Skagit line. So that is when you make the snap tee. Now let's have a look at how you make the snap tee. How do you make this cast? Well, I'm on the left side of the river. I'm going to make a right-handed cast. As I said, this cast is always a cast that is done with your upstream arm. So it's my right hand in this case. And this cast consists of three separate movements. We're going to look at those movements individually, break them down. And the idea is if you can understand what each movement's supposed to do, it makes it a lot easier to comprehend the cast and make it happen. And the three movements are called the setup stroke, the D loop stroke, and the forward stroke. The setup stroke starts when your line has swung around and reached the end of the dangle, where the line doesn't swing any further, and you want to start your cast. And I'm just going to draw a shape for you with my rod. And that shape is a capital letter D. Capital D. So the rod will start pointing downriver, slowly and vertically climbs. At the top of the climb, it sweeps out towards the far bank and down, and then sweeps back to the starting point, the capital letter D. So it looks like this. Up, out, round, and to the starting point. But there has to be a little bit of speed in it. There's a little snap in the underside. It's very important. This is the correct speed of this cast. Up, out, snap. You see that little acceleration there? That acceleration is most important on this cast. That's the setup stroke. Let's show you that setup, setup stroke as a, a natural move. And I want to show you that D with and without the snap, to, so you can see what the relevance of the snap is. Here it is at full speed with that snap. Slow vertical lift out to the far side, snap. And that snap makes the line jump from downriver and it lands upstream of me. Here's me across the river. If I draw a mental line right across the river here, what I want is that fly and my leader and my line to go upstream of this imaginary line. Let me show you again. Here's the right one, up, round, snap. See how the fly and line landed up there? That's what you're trying to achieve. So if you do that, that's your setup stroke right. If you don't snap, or if you draw too small a D, or you draw too slow a D, then what happens is the line kind of wimply falls in a mess below you. And that is dangerous. That will result in you hitting yourself when you make and complete this cast. So never make and never continue that stroke if your D is a failure and the line is well below you. That's a really good safety tip. So, once you've got your snap set up right, like here, and the fly is above you, we're now going to do the second move. And the second movement 
is called the D-loop stroke. And the crux of a D-loop is like a bow and arrow. I'm going to just kind of face you here. Imagine I've got a bow here. If I'm firing an arrow straight at the camera, I'm going to pull the bow back this way. In spay casting, this pulling of the bow is what's called a D-loop. See how that's kind of shaped into a D-loop, a shape like that? That D-loop should be right opposite where you want your cast to go. That's what's going to make it easy. Effortless. So if you've set your cast up right and the line's above you, you're going to sweep the rod around until the rod is opposite your target. And the most important part about this is the climb. And what that is, I'm going to wrap the line around the rod again. When you finish the D, the first move, your rod should be about one foot above the water. And then as you sweep round, that rod should climb. See there it's two foot, and here is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it sweeps and climbs the whole way round. That is a good move. You don't want to go flat and lift, and you certainly don't want to go from one straight to fourteen like that. You want this lovely long gradual sweep all the way around. The rod shouldn't change speed and the rod shouldn't change angle. 1 to 14 even speed and even angle. And that is the correct tempo and rhythm and move of the D-loop stroke. So if I want to go right across the river for whatever reason my sweep would stop right opposite the opposite. And if I wanted to cast right downstream my sweep would come round and stop about here so that the rod is aligned with where I want the cast to go. Very important that you get that sweep all the way around. And then the third part, that's just the forward stroke, that's the delivery of the cast. If you've got your setup stroke right, and you've got a lovely D-loop and everything's aligned, then your forward stroke is just a regular forward stroke where you drive the rod forward, pitch the rod over like that with a little kick and generate the line speed to kick it out there. That's your last part. Let me put it all together. Let me just show you that whole cast as it should be. At full speed, first the setup, then the D-loop stroke, and then the forward stroke. And that is the snap T. That's how you do it. Okay, that's it. Let's show you one more. All right, there's the line. It's swung round to the dangle, or imagine it has. It's got to the point where it'll swing no further. Here's the letter D. Up, out, snap. Sweep round, form a D-loop, fire the rod tip right opposite where it was. And that is all there is to the snap T. Okay, so let's take a look at things that go wrong. What are the commonest things that can go wrong? Well, safety is the most important paramount thing of a spay cast. Okay, and things that can go wrong are that snap that I mentioned. If you don't get the snap right and the fly comes above you, in other words, the fly lands below you here and you come round as you go forward, whoa, you're going to hit yourself with a line. All right, so that's not good. And that's all because the line didn't come upstream of me. That's why it's so important from the beginning of the cast, you're aware of this and you make sure that that line passes you. Then when you come round, you've cleared the line on the water and that means when you go forward you won't tangle it, it won't hit you and you won't make a bad cast. Another one is what's called the dreaded dip and the dreaded dip puts the, into the fly line a thing called a bloody L and it's a shocker, it's a terrible casting mistake. Again I'm going to wrap the line around the rod, show you the rod path, there's the 1, I'm going to do the 1 to 14 and if you do it right, the rod just maintains this incline and climb all the way till it's opposite the target. If you do it right, if you do it wrong, for whatever reason, your muscle memory of something wants to dip the rod. And the rod puts a scoop into it. That's a dreaded dip. See, there's the right, it's climbing, 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 scoop. People do it. I don't know why they do it, but my gosh, a lot of people do it. Or oh, they do it this way. They do the D, but they stop the rod high. And because the rod is high at the end of the D, they come sweeping down and, and, and do the dip. And that dip 
is a problem because it puts an L shape into the fly line. That L shape is called the bloody L. Spade casting terminology. Let me show you it. If I sweep round here, you can see that this line has a kink, a little L shape in it. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the bloody L. Let me show you that again. Sweep. There's a big zig in it. And most of my fly line is facing the target, but some of it's not. Some of it's facing upriver. And when you go forward with that, you watch how this cast fails. I go forward with an L, it doesn't want to come out of the water. And that's because my fly line did not straighten to the target. And so it's real important that you come round sweeping, straightening all the fly line so you've got a lovely straight path to where you want to go and then the cast will work. And the commonest cause of that bloody L is that dreaded dip I mentioned. I'm going to do both of those and you can kind of look at the rod tip or you can look at the end result and see which one's got a bloody L in or which one's got a straight move. Okay, that was a good one, right? And I see that rod climbed and swept around nice and even opposite my target. Now here comes the bloody L. Watch the rod tip. And it just puts a huge clump of L in the water and the cast fails. So really, that is the commonest mistake to avoid on the snap tee. You'll see it. a lot of people do it. They put that bloody L in and they fold the line with a dreaded dip. You've got to avoid that. You want to be safe, make sure that first move gets the line out of the water. And on that note, the last little thing I'm going to tell you about on this cast is if the line goes too far above you. If you make this cast and the line goes way, way above you, you'll find you get another bloody L because the line has gone too far upstream. And that is always going to create a bad cast. So when you're practicing these snap tees, you're trying to make the line and leader land just upstream of you, not a long way upstream of you. In a nutshell, that is the snap tee, circle space, C space, whatever you like. There's the three moves, the setup stroke, the D loop stroke, and the forward stroke. Those are some nuggets for you if you like to understand how to get them right and what things to do, but also a couple of the common problems there that, that I'll, I'll see a lot of time when I'm teaching. I just watch people doing that and those are the ones I see more often than not. So I thought we'd throw them into this little video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something and maybe hopefully you learned this snap tea cast and maybe one day I'll see you on the water throwing out some booming cast across the river getting into steelhead. I hope so. But for now, thank you so much for tuning in another Rio how-to episode.